car magician job. He's forgotten his cards. Oh, he only needs the one. Looks like he's going to autograph it for me. That's not such a good sign. I'm sure the school trip will be fine, though. This is year five getting on the coach. They don't know it yet, but their teachers and parents have set them right up. They think they're going on a school trip that steps back in time, but they're going to have the time of their lives. They're off to visit... <laughs> Leeds Castle. It's a place literally dripping with history. It's been a Norman stronghold and the private property of six medieval queens. The kids are really excited to be getting out of school, but they have no idea they're about to see some Tudor trickery inside a castle once used by King Henry VIII. And guess who John's being made to look like? OK, so these trippers will never believe John's actually Henry VIII unless they think this coach is a time machine. John's even deeper in character, playing a castle tour guide dressed as the famous king. He's been painstakingly accurate with his research. It's my favourite period of history, Tudor. Uh, Tudor chicken leg, Tudor sandwich, Tudor toffee. I'll do any of that. Of course, when I say painstaking, I mean stomach pain. Here come the trippers, hungry for history. Meanwhile, John's still walking the hallowed halls. He'd better get his royal rearing gear as the kids aren't far behind. The fire is crackling, the magic touch paper is lit. The cameras are set and John's bang up for it. Here come his loyal subjects now. Are any of them eagle-eyed enough to see through his regal disguise? I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the things that we have here at the castle. We have some very, very exciting things. Have you had a look round? Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! Wonderful! It's a marvellous place. We've got all sorts of exciting things. I'd like to tell you about some of them, uh, and one in particular that has something to do with Henry VIII. Now, this is going to be spooky. I can feel it. King Henry, he was a lovely man, but he was a little bit superstitious. And one of the things he was very, very superstitious about was security. And uh, there's a rumour that one day King Henry decided he wanted all the doors locked every night because he was afraid, you see. He was afraid that he might get what we call a Tudor intruder. <laughs> She's laughing now, but she won't be once he's chewed her ear off. So every single door was locked. Remarkably, something started to happen. During the night, every key would turn in its lock without anyone touching it. And so King Henry, he was, he was upset by this. He was a superstitious man, he was a scared man, he didn't want intruders. And one night, in a fit of anger, he jumped out of bed with a hammer and he rushed around the castle, smashing every single key in its lock so that every single key was bent so none of them could turn, except for one key. This key here. Keep watching, it's about to get even more magic key. This is the only key that King Henry never broke or bent with his hammer. And it has some very strange properties. This isn't true, by the way. It's all part of the Tudor-inspired trick. Watch very, very carefully. Look, if I put the key on my hand like that, watch what happens. Look. Watch it very closely. Look, can you see what's happening? He spotted something. Eh? The key's moving on its own. Whoa, I saw it really go then. It's remarkable. Would you like to have a look at it? John's made them speechless, but it's not because they can't get a word in. Yes, it's just an ordinary key. It probably won't turn in your hand. There's nothing strange about the key except John's spooky story. Now, obviously, that key just turned on my hand, but when these keys turned in Henry's day, they didn't turn in the hand. They actually turned when they were in the lock. So if I hold it like this and you watch very carefully, look, we'll see whether it will do it again. Look. John's fist represents the lock, but will the key turn the class's head towards his magical identity? It's turning around in his hand, whoa! Turning around in my hand. Whoa, that is spooky, get it? Would you like to have a look, have a look at the key? It's remarkable, isn't it? Now, obviously, obviously people wondered why that happened. They're checking it out, but they still can't see anything untoward. Is it not turning? What? Who'd like to have a go and see if it will turn in their hand? This young girl here, what's your name? Sky. Wonderful, Sky, would you come and join me? Yes, wonderful. Come and stand here, Sky. Sky's the limit for this next trick. OK, now what I want you to do, Sky, is I want you to hold out your hand for me nice and flat. That's great. And we'll just put the key in your hand, close it nice and tight, and we'll see if the key begins to turn in her hand. She's holding the key, but will she unlock John's magical secret? Nothing's happening. I wonder why it won't turn. 
Just open your hand for me a moment, would you? <gasps> Look at that, boys and girls. The key has bent inside her hand. They can't believe it. How did it happen? Well done, Sky. You that must have been a key King Henry VIII hit with his hammer. That was wonderful, thank it's you. It's certainly been a hit of a trick. Key? First John made a key turn in his hand. Yeah. It then turned in his fist. He asked for a volunteer and the key didn't turn in their hand. But it did bend as John magically bent the truth. It's been historical, but it's all about to get hysterical when a magical day turns into a magical night. Oh!